Quick rundown of what we'll be talking about uh, today. A little later in the program, Randy Staples from Idaho Weekly Briefing will join us and uh, give us a rundown, too, as well, on the fires that have broken out, uh, not just across Idaho, but really across the Northwest. A lot of folks who may have been outside early on Saturday morning, not long after sunrise, realized they weren't looking at fog, but they were looking at just a, a great deal of smoke that had, had settled in the area, and you could actually pick up that odor of, uh, of burnt wood or sagebrush uh, whatever had been consumed in some of those neighboring fires over the weekend. A lot of those fires pretty well contained now at this point, at least in the, the Magic Valley area. Uh, Randy will give us an update about that. Some of the other things that we'll be talking about during the program today, a lot of new polling data out when it comes to the national uh, national political scene, and uh, some of it really not surprising now at this point, although the conventional wisdom among the pundit, uh, punditry class in Washington is that uh, this thing, this Trump phenomenon, is going to run out of steam sometime soon. Uh, they just don't know when. And they've been telling themselves, patting themselves on the back and speaking in their echo chambers, saying, well, the American people, as if, of course, somehow they know what we're all thinking. 808, Bill Colley with you on Top Story. 60 right now. Well, okay, I said 60, and just as I said that, it dropped to 59, and I'd like to be accurate, so we'll say 59 at the moment. And thank you for joining me on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, NewsRadio1310.com. Tonight, 7.30, in the Taylor Building of the College of Southern Idaho, there is going to be a program taking place, and this might be the, the, the biggest event when it comes to an effort by a growing group of local people to bring an end, or at least a moratorium, to this refugee resettlement program here in the, the Magic Valley. We're expecting 300 Syrian Muslim refugees sometime in October. There seems to be, uh, I think, a growing consensus that maybe now is not the time for this to take place, or at least not on this type of scale, and at least not until we know a little bit more about who would be coming here. Uh, there was a lot of detail about this online over the weekend. A meeting taking place tonight at 7.30 in the Taylor Building. I believe it's room 277. Room two, well, it's not going to be a huge building, and I don't think there's that much going on there. There is a college board meeting. The trustees are meeting uh, just a little after 4 o'clock this afternoon, and this is likely going to be the meeting where they decide to shut down public discussion on this matter to severely hamper the ability of the public, the taxpayers who support this operation, to actually have any input into this. This has been threatened, and it looks like you'll have to give them 48 hours' notice, and that will include business days and not weekends. So that would mean by the end of business on Wednesday, prior to an upcoming Monday meeting, you would have to tell them what you're going to talk about before they would actually approve your opportunity to speak at this board during the public comment section. But following that, at 7.30 this evening, this other meeting is taking place, room 277. And here's the thing. State Representative Pete Nielsen is actually going to be taking part in the panel discussion. He is the first state legislator, to my knowledge, to publicly come out in support of a moratorium or some changes to this program. Now, we've had a couple of others who've had an interest in the program, and they'd like to gather more details. State Representative Lee Hyder was one of them. He was at an event a couple of weeks ago here in town, uh, but I do not believe that he has, made a, he, has, he has made his position clear yet. But we now have the very first state legislator who has come out and basically said, we need to talk about this program, and we need some answers, and we need them now. So he'll be taking part in that. Also, I happened to see in the Spokesman Review out of Spokane, Washington yesterday, there was a story about the, the town hall meetings, and well over 100 of them now done this year by U.S. Senator Mike Crapo here in Idaho. And his, uh, his uh, staff, there was a spokeswoman from his staff that was quoted in the story. Now, Usually when you're, when you're doing a story and there's something you don't want to talk about that's taken place at some of these town hall meetings, and remember, the Spokesman Review hasn't been to any of these meetings. They're just taking, uh, taking the word of the senator's office. If there was something that the senator's office didn't want to share, they wouldn't share it. On the other hand, the spokeswoman actually told the newspaper in Spokane, which has a pretty good-sized readership in, in, uh, in northern Idaho as well, she said that this has been one of the hottest topics that they have addressed, and she said that the senator would consider a moratorium on the program. So they're not trying to hide this. In other words, you've got to remember from a political standpoint what she's just done. 
She didn't have to reveal this to the newspaper. The newspaper had not been attending these meetings. That way they could have brushed it under the rug. Instead, she told the newspaper that the constituents are greatly concerned about this issue. So you're seeing what's taking place here. They have to be aware of this. The dog catchers over on that board of trustees at the College of Southern Idaho have to be aware of this, that there are now some very important players who are saying, whoa, wait a minute here. 812, Bill Colley with you this morning. You're listening to News Radio 1310, KLIX, as well as online at newsradio1310.com. If you'd like to reach our program this morning, the telephone number is 736 0300. That phone number again, 736 0300. Or reach me by email at bill.colley at townsquaremedia.com. Bill.colley at townsquaremedia.com. A national publication called WorldNet Daily over the weekend carried a story, and it's I printed it out this morning. It is lengthy. I mean, it is very, very lengthy. This thing is probably six or seven pages long, but it discusses what's going on in four different communities around the country when it comes to this refugee resettlement program, Twin Falls being among them. In fact, a, a large portion of this story is, is really a dedicated to an interview with Rick Martin, who is a, a resident of Buell, who has been involved with this effort and uh, Rick explaining that they are going door-to-door explaining to people what's going on and also explaining to people that the United Nations is involved. And people will doubt that, and they'll actually show them press clippings that identify the United Nations' involvement, and then people are absolutely gobsmacked that the UN is involved. Here's a thought. Back in the old Soviet Union, when the, 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 the empire, the evil empire, had, had absorbed the Baltic states, Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia, as well as neighboring Ukraine, one way that Stalin was able to maintain control was to resettle tens of millions of ethnic Russians in those countries. Even to this day, since the collapse 25 years ago of the Soviet Empire, even to this day, that's one of the reasons we have a battle going on with Russia and Ukraine right now, is because Putin says, well, we have to defend the ethnic Russians. There's a large group of them in one, one half of Ukraine. So it's, it's one way for them to get their foot in the door. And in the Baltic republics, in those three smaller countries, same thing going on. Constant threats against those countries. That was all done to break down those cultures. Easier to control those states by the Soviet empire by breaking down their cultures, by resettling separate people from separate cultures in large, large numbers. It struck me as I was reading this over the weekend This is what the UN is doing. They are breaking down the traditional American culture that has bestrode this globe like a colossus for the last 100 years. That apparently is really the goal of all of this, and and, and it's just that subtle way that they happen to be doing it. And if you oppose it, they scream bigot. There is, in fact, a a great piece in here in, in one part of the country where this is going on. Some college professor came out and claimed that a speaker at some event was racist, even though the fellow never actually talked about race whatsoever, uh, simply talked about security concerns. Uh, The writer, Leo Homan is his name, he says, in conservative Twin Falls, for instance, a group of 100 activists are going door-to-door, informing their neighbors about how the program works. Organizer Rick Martin says most people are surprised to find out that the United Nations picks up most of the refugees destined for America, and that the Catholic Church, the Lutheran and Episcopal Churches, along with evangelical and Jewish groups, get paid ka-ching, ka-ching by the federal government to resettle the refugees in the U.S. Now, you see, a lot of these people coming here aren't even Christians. These churches are willing to cut their own throats because, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, look at all that money. (laughs) God loves money, don't you know? I don't understand how these people can stand in a pulpit on a Sunday and, and rail against greed, and then turn around, oh, where's the check? Where's the check? And they just scoop up as much as they can through a program like this. When we mention that the UN is involved, most of the time they won't believe it, so we have to show them the articles, Martin said. The UN connection could explain why so many Muslim refugees are coming to the U.S. from jihadist hotbeds like Syria and Somalia, while persecuted Christians in Syria, Iraq, and Egypt have a hard time getting within sight of the Statue of Liberty. A great piece. If you have not seen this, you can actually, if you go to your computer and you look up this fellow, Leo Homan, just type that into a search engine 
Um, there are several, by the way. Start, start page may be a good place to start because Google tends to be a little snoopy. Uh, go type that in, and you can come up with this story from World Net Daily. You will be, as I say, just over overwhelmed by what we're reading here. And by the way, since the beginning of this program, way back in the 1970s, there have been millions of these people resettled here. Just since 2002 in Idaho, almost 11,000 people in this state. You're on the air with Bill Colley at 817. What's on your mind? Oh, well, Bill, I think you hit the nose on the head if you follow the money to figure out what's going on. It's, it's amazing how our country has gotten to the point that a dollar bill means more to them than the security of their own people. And, you know, we've got Ferguson burning down because we got no jobs and everything else, but they're bringing more people in and allowing more people to come over the border not caring about the people that actually go to the office. So we need to remember all these people at the college that are allowing this to come through the next time they're up for vote. Just get up out. Get somebody else in there. And I, I agree with that. I think that we're going to have to find some decent candidates and uh, and put those people up for office. Uh, let, me, let me add something to that quickly about this. They are not bringing the, the oppressed Christians here. In fact, most of these churches barely say anything about that. And yet they claim then we're mean-spirited because we won't bring the Muslims here, some of whom may be responsible for killing the Christians. You're on the air at 818 on News Radio 1310 KLIX. What's on your mind? How come, you, how come you're such a dictator? You don't accept other opinions other than yours. I mean, I don't know what kind of... Do, do, do What's you know your opinion? You live democracy. What's your opinion? You know that. What's your opinion? Underlay, underlay, arriba, arriba. Hey, quickly, break coming up. You're up next on the air. You're listening to News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Hello. Sure, go ahead. You got about 30 seconds. Okay, yeah, I just want to let you know the bribery is not just on this side, the bribery is on the other side also. I used to work with a bunch of uh, Russian Muslims and found out from them that they didn't want to come over here. But the federal government kept offering them more and more and more and more until they couldn't refuse, and they brought them over here anyway. <laughs> you're going to like the United States or else. <laughs> Thank you much for your telephone call. Well, you're going to like the move. You don't have to like the United States once you get there. In fact, here's a computer. If you'd like to go join ISIS, go right ahead. And remember, America's a bad country, and we've got to teach it a lesson. 20 minutes after 8 o'clock, Bill Colley with you. Oh. Quickly, i got to mention something, too, uh, another scandal brewing on the uh, state level, state and local level when it comes to Planned Parenthood. I want to get to that a little later in the program as well. The governor of Idaho, who claims to be a devout Roman Catholic, has decided that there is no need to investigate Planned Parenthood within the state. Details on that are coming up during the program. Bill Colley with you. 60, 20 minutes after 8 o'clock. Top story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. To give you an idea of how well some of these cultures are meshing, there's a story at. Uh, I, I get this Middle East watch in my email every day. Why are Londoners uncomfortable with a Muslim mayor? Apparently, somebody has actually decided that they're going to toss a hat into a ring and run as a, as a mayoral candidate in London and, and happens to be a Muslim. And uh, the writer says, by and large, Muslim politicians in the UK tend to be far more divisive to be polite. Some have questionable backgrounds, such as the defense of Louis Farrakhan or Guantanamo Bay detainees, and, uh, and have been investigated for, quote, improper behavior. And then there's quite a bit of detail as to what that all entails. Over at the Jerusalem Post, it is said that a Jewish candidate has already been uh, attacked by uh, the Muslims. <laughs> so... Um, in other words, we're going to take over the city, and we don't want any lip from you. 825, Bill Colley with you, 61, News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. You can reach the program by giving us a call, 736 0300, 736 0300, and you're on the air. Good morning, Bill. Yeah, the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees uh, is uh, Antonio Guetti's. And or something like that. He was the president of the Socialist International for oh, well over a decade before coming the High Commissioner. And of course, International Socialist is just a new name for communist. And of course, the United Nations has been controlled by <laughs> communists 
they want to destroy America, and, and they're doing just like you say. They they want to destroy our culture by bringing all these people in here. But the threat we have now, of course, is the fact that the FBI said they're, they're, that vetting of these Syrian Muslim refugees is, is totally impossible because there's no records. Yeah, and the, you have an actual FBI, I mean, someone in the hierarchy of the FBI testifying as recently as February at a congressional hearing saying, we don't know. Well, absolutely. And, and you know, and then everybody says, oh, you know, terrorists coming in as refugees. That's not possible. But actually, World Net Daily just revealed back in May that it says uh, the title was terrorists pose as refugee nabbed by cops. So, I mean, folks, it's happening, and we're going to allow 300 of these people. And right now, of course, Islam is basically in stage three, which is total war. And don't, do you think that there might be a few of these Islamic terrorist refugee in the terrorists, in the refugee that are coming yeah. into this country? I mean, I'm sure we have to be very naive to not think that. I thank you much for the telephone call. Communist International getting involved in all of this. <laughs> Yeah, you know, the whole idea, if you can destroy the United States, just think of what you can get away with around the world. Do you ever see the movie Reds uh, with Warren Beatty? There's actually a scene where he is sent by the Soviets, the new, the new rulers of the Soviet Union, to go down to some Muslim countries and, and call for jihad. He doesn't realize it, but the translator explains it that way, and he's actually, uh, you know, he's actually shocked that that was done. But sure enough, I mean, that has been the goal of these people for a century. We have another caller with us, 827. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. And you're up next. You're on the air. Hey, good morning, Bill. Morning. Hey, uh, so I don't have too much of a problem with uh, with, with immigration and resettlement it's in moderation, right? It's the assimilation part to the United States culture that I have real problem that they're not taking care of. I came from uh, El Cajon, California a small suburb of San Diego where they resettled a lot of Christian, Chaldean, you know, uh, Muslims uh, from Iraq. And we were spying, but then it, it got to where it, it, they had their own communities. And, uh, you know, we decided it was time to leave when they started printing school notices in English, Spanish, and Arabic. And it just, it, it, it gets out of hand. Where's the assimilation? You know, where's the where's the, the onus on, on those folks coming in? Who, who, to, who was uh, the political candidate last week that said... Uh... It was Bobby Jindal, I think, that said that in in, in some remarks that the immigration uh, without assimilation is just nothing but an invasion. Well, yeah, absolutely. And was it that what, back in the 1920s and 1900s where they shut down uh, all immigration for a period of years so that they could allow for that large influx of immigrants to assimilate and become Americans? I mean, that's that's what it's all about to me. Um, learn the language, you know, learn learn what the culture is about, learn what America has to offer, and, and, and be upright, you know, citizens. Don't, don't seclude yourself into your own cultures that, you know, I mean, your cultural identity is fine. You know, you want to make, maintain your heritage, but, but you're starting a new, you know, a new life in a new country. You, you, in my opinion, you should, um, you know, make a go of it. Agreed. I thank you much for the telephone call. And, and the, the, the idea being that we used to teach civics in schools, and I mentioned Jim Patrick having proposed that in Idaho, had found a lot of enemies when he suggested we do that. But even Norman Lear, former liberal TV producer, now says he's a conservative, says we need that again so people can learn about why this country is different. But if you're a member of the, uh, you know, one of the goons on the American left, you so despise this culture, you want to destroy it, you don't want that being taught to people. You want people out there in the streets going, you know, they want 300 million different nations within our borders. That's how they're going to destroy the place. And then they dream or they believe that somehow they're going to institute, of course, that uh, that socialist republic yeah uh, that's a frightening thought hey coming up in about 10 minutes randy staples will join us uh right here on news radio 1310 klix and news radio 1310.com by the way my whole musical library there could be worse <laughs> Right now, Democrats out there are all standing at attention, aren't they? Yep, I'm sure.